it's uh, it's insane what this season came to. Honestly, I didn't think we had a chance at the playoffs. And then uh, All-Star break came around. We started playing really good baseball. Kept winning, kept winning, and nobody beat us. So it's awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. And can I ask you, you've seen a lot of kids around here, yes, little kids. I mean, they're playing the football, they're playing the yeah. football. Like, what do you think? It's like a family event out here. The environment is just amazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can look everywhere. There's just little kids with signs, having the time of their lives. Yeah. I just can't imagine doing this when I was young. I would, this is like a perfect picture dream. Yeah. And, uh, Thanks, you guys. Thanks thank so you. much. Hey there. Hey. What's your name? Uh, Ryan. Ryan, hey, what time did you get out here? Uh, we got out here around 10.30 in the morning. Yeah, let me ask you, were you able to sleep last night? Uh, it was a bit difficult, but uh, it was something definitely to look forward to. Uh, this Waking up this morning, it was great to just wake up and go straight here and be ready for a fun day. When you see everyone out here, all these fans crowded around, all for the Braves, what do you think? Uh, I think that it's crazy that everyone is around this one fan base. It's almost like we, we went for a 26-year break and now we're back better than ever. That's awesome. That's awesome. How about you guys? Hey, so it must be nice to be out of school on occasion like this. Oh, right? yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Tell me, what time did you guys get out here? About 10.30. About 10.30? Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about the crowd? At 10.30, it was already starting to get really It was. I was yeah. surprised. I thought it would be just a rush at the end, but people were already lining up way before we were here. And i got to ask you, from 10.30 till now, it's a lot of time to pass. What have you guys been doing to kill time? Um, throwing baseballs and playing football. Pick up basketball. Uh, pick up bas uh, baseball. Yeah, and um, I mean, what do you want to say to the Braves? They're going to be coming down very shortly. I mean, what what are the words that you want them to hear from their fans? Great season. Go, go Amazing Braves season. and good yeah. season. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you, I mean, the the uh, parade is supposed to be coming down shortly. We're told around 2 o'clock. We understand that they may have gotten here slightly earlier. They're hanging up up the road uh, just for a little bit from what we understand. But I'm going to go ahead and have, St have Stephen, my photographer, go ahead and pan around and show you. I honestly, guys, cannot tell you how many people are out here. I, I honestly would have to say maybe thousands. As far as the eye can see, the, the both sides of Cobb Parkway have been cordoned off. You can see barricades and fans, layers and layers of fans out here just waiting for these guys to come down. I mean, if you look across the way, look at all those kids. They've got signs. Uh, some, we found one had a camcorder. I mean, this is really history in the making for a lot of these kids. And for them to be out um, in all of the metro Atlanta area, to be out here for this day is unbelievable. What a great win for the city. What a great win for our community. Uh, back to you guys. Just great Patty, stuff, Patty. Thanks. I love what that uh, fan said, and he said, I've never seen anything like this in my entire lifetime, and it does raise the point that this has been a win for a whole new generation oh, yeah. of Braves fans, you know, it being 26 years since the last time we got a win. So really cool to see that younger generation get to experience something like what you got to experience when you were here for the 1995 World Series. Well, I thought it was fun listening to that 10-year-old say, well, we took a 26-year break. <laughs> <laughs> 16 years before I was born. Uh, but no, you're right. It, it's it's a win for the whole area, and it it puts that curse to rest. I don't believe in curses, but... There is no curse. After 28-3, to 3, <laughs> we could be forgiven. Yeah. And after Adam Duvall's grand slam and things uh, fell apart there in Game 5, we could have been forgiven for having... <laughs> Some small doubts, but, yeah. but they put all that to rest and, and thankfully. I think it's big because you talk about some of those kids who are out of school now. They get a chance to enjoy this. Oh, yeah. And it'll be something that they'll talk about to their kids or their grandkids when they get older and have a sense of pride about, hey, I was around when that happened. Just like sure. you say, in 95, you got to be able to see it. Now you have another chance of a whole new, like you mentioned, old genre of new kids who can say, I was around when the Braves won the World Series in 2021. Yeah. It's something I know they would never forget. Frankly, all of us won't forget it either. Yeah, how can you forget something like this? Uh, we want to go to one of our other reporters who's all along the parade route, our Christopher King, who is at Cobb Parkway and Galleria. Christopher, how are things in your area? Yeah, Courtney, I'm hearing some rumbling going on behind me. Take a look over here. This is the parade route. You can see thousands upon thousands of fans are out here. Check out this energy. Um, I talked with some fans out here before, and some of them were saying, hey, I called up from work today. Don't put me on the camera. And take a look up over here. 
There's a fire truck going by right now. Um, the fans, of course, waving at that. They're okay, Christopher, uh, thank you very much. We, uh, sorry for the technical difficulties there, but you can see the bus is starting to arrive on that first bus. Uh, Chairman Terry McGurk of the Atlanta Braves uh, and President and CEO Derek Schiller. Boy, they got a lot to celebrate, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you heard those fans go wild when the parade came their way. Let's go to where Patty Pan is. We're hearing that the parade is passing through her location. Let's take it away, Patty. Yeah, as you can see, here's a live look at what is going on right here. We just saw a bunch of Cobb County Sheriff's vehicles, Cobb County Police vehicles. Just take a look. Take a look. Just take a look at all the vehicles that are coming down. Listen to the fans out here. See the trolley coming up the road just a little bit. I mean, these fans could not be happier to be out here. I mean, just listen to the excitement that is out here. And these guys are driving slow, letting the fans soak in every minute, every second of this parade. These guys have all been out here waiting, braving the cold, many of them from 7 o'clock in the morning this morning. And like I said, some of them came and camped out last night. We just saw Mayor uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms go by. And we are continuing to see a number of vehicles go by. But here's the trolley. Here's the cool looking trolley coming by right now. I'm gonna go ahead and give it back to you guys as this parade continues. Uh, Patty, thanks very much. Uh, it's just so exciting to, to see those open air buses and, yeah. and yeah. get a chance to see your, your heroes' faces in person. I mean, people have been watching Freddie Freeman on the field and watching him on TV, but to, to get a chance to see his face uh, 30 40. feet away is a big deal. Well, we were talking about this before we came down, how fast they got all the buses wrapped in the, the World Series yeah. championship <laughs> and all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff, and now it's ready for the trolleys and guys. The fans, I mean, they're going to love it. They get a chance to see these guys. And there are a lot of fans who didn't have the money maybe to come to Truist to watch sure. the game or go to Houston. So now this is their chance to really come out and just show their support for the team. So you can see by all the people, they are out and loud and proud. Oh, yeah. And, it, you know, it also brings to mind just the fact that the Braves no longer play in Turner Field anymore. They're out here in Truist Park. It's Cobb County. It's 20 miles outside of Atlanta. But right. you know what? This whole day has been an effort to incorporate our entire area. They don't want to leave anyone out. And they want to celebrate the Braves' roots and history and, you know, heritage of Atlanta, but also the future, which is out here at Truist Park. And it's been cool throughout this entire World Series run just to see how it's included people, even if they didn't have the money to buy that World Series ticket. People were here, they were at the battery watching on the big screen, yeah. and you didn't need a ticket for that. So, um, you know, it's just been a very inclusive celebration all throughout this whole World Series run. Yeah, it really is. And we're sitting here uh, on the pool deck at the Omni Hotel, and believe it or not, there are a couple of young children actually in this heated pool. Uh, but <laughs> I, I bring that up, and we thank the Omni for allowing us to have this great location yeah. over the battery. But to, to point out that we can look to our left and, uh, you know, a couple hundred yards away, see people filing in to Truist Park. Uh, those seats were made available for free as well. Now, my understanding is that some of them were uh, resold for hundreds of dollars. Uh, uh, as this, disappointing. As is disappointing yeah. and, and typical, <laughs> unfortunately. But, but to your point, it, it has been uh, very inclusive, uh, and the, the crowd behind us could not be more eager to see them in person. They're excited. They want to see the stars. They also want to see Ludacris. And big, big boy, boy right? who yeah. are set to take the stage out here at Truist Park as a big after party celebration. That's going to be great. I don't think it's going to be an after party celebration. It's going to be an all day celebration. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to be partying all day long, but it's definitely going to be fun to have Luda and have Big Boy, two guys from this Atlanta area yes. who are avid Braves fans, but come out and people enjoy it. So it's fun to be able to open it back up for the fans. And like you mentioned, it was free for the fans to come back out. Some people did try to resell the tickets, but at the end of the day, everybody's going to be excited to be out here and you know, just show their support of the Braves who gave us all a, a lot to cheer for here in the last couple months. Yeah, no question about it. As you can see, most of the 
open air buses there in the parade. Some of the Braves are going to get some special treatment. Uh, Freddie Freeman, not surprisingly, is going to be in his own uh, pickup truck and have the spotlight on him. Also, Jorge Soler, who was the, the World Series MVP and <laughs> should have been. Uh, and Eddie Rosario as well, who was the MVP at the NLCS. We wouldn't have gotten to the World Series were it not for Eddie Rosario. Yeah, of course. Uh, not to mention some of the other huge stars, Ozzy Albies, Max Free, the pitcher who capped off an incredible run, sort of redeeming himself from his earlier performance in the series. He gave a fantastic performance in Game 6. I mean, getting stepped on the way he was stepped on in that first inning, uh, getting out of that inning, and the look on his face when he walked off the field shocked, you could tell. He, was, he wasn't going to let it happen. You know what's interesting is we talk about, oh, maybe there's an Atlanta curse, and you can't lie and say as soon as he got his ankle stepped on, you're like, oh, this has to be something Atlanta curse-wise. Uh, but he stayed out and battled and really went out and played really well. I mean, so many guys stepped up in a lot of different ways. Adam Duvall, I mean, a lot of different players play well in this. I mean, this is a Braves team that hit 23 home runs in the postseason. I mean, that's unbelievable in 16 games to have that kind of power going in. And uh, this team excelled throughout. And you see all the, the different buses. And the fans get a chance to see their favorite players because of the roof is off, the double-deckers. We love those. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and it's amazing to see how deeply lined the streets are with fans, you know, oh. maybe 10 rows deep on either side of the road. It was that way when they were downtown uh, in Atlanta starting on Peachtree. It's just been amazing to see how many people turned out for this. Yeah, it really is. And, and kudos to the folks in charge at the local school districts to decide to give uh, the kids the day off. I know it may have created a bit of a complication for some moms and dads who had to work, but hey, just take the day off. Obviously, a lot of people did and are enjoying uh, seeing these these Braves, who some of whom they may be seeing for the last time. I mean, you talk about Adam Duvall, shock. He and Jock Peterson, Jorge Soler, Eddie Rosario, they were acquired by Alex Anthopoulos there at the trade deadline. Not all of them are going to be on this team. Uh, I can't tell. I could be which mistaken on the at. far left. That appears to be Jock Peterson with the hat to the back. Pearls. Yeah. Oh yeah. They he say was throwing strings of pearls <laughs> out into the crowd earlier on in the parade route, which is, you know, it's a signature thing, right? Yeah, that's Jock. You see number 22 right there. Yeah, there the go. far left. There good eyes, Courtney. Good eyes. Yeah. yeah. Jock well, Peterson. It, you know, the pearls that gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, the the enthusiasm and the sort of lightness that he brought to the team. Uh, obviously, he's a serious ball player. He won the World Series with the Dodgers last year. But he liked to joke around. He liked to play cards with the pitchers, as, oh, yeah. he, as he wrote in that Players' Tribune article. Uh, and I think he brought a little bit of swagger to this team at a time when it needed it. Oh, no doubt about it. He was one of those type of guys that you look for every single time he was out there, every single time they put a camera in front of his face, he was going to be one of those type of guys that you love to watch and see because he had that kind of personality. And Rush, you're spot on. He, is, he brought a definite swag. I mean, Heredia, you know, you can always hear him from a mile away coming. Uh, was a bolt of energy as well, too. But uh, what Jock did, I think, for the city, I think he rejuvenated a lot of people, gave us something to root for, gave us something to hang our hat on. I mean, yeah. like we mentioned, we're sitting up here wearing pearls. No, yeah. You couldn't expect it that coming into the playoffs that everybody would be wanting to wear pearls because of one guy. But his infectious personality is a reason why and brought it all together. Infectious. I like that you use that word because he's actually celebrating back-to-back World Series championships. He right. won with the Dodgers last season in 2020, and then as soon as he joins the team, boom. Now we're winners, too. I mean, it, did it rub off? No. <laughs> yeah, it certainly seems like it. Interestingly, he was with the Cubs earlier this year, and when he was traded to Atlanta, he's thinking to himself, he says, why, you know, why is Atlanta buying and not selling? I mean, right. Atlanta wasn't over, 600, over 500 until the 6th of August. He figures he's going to show up, things aren't going to go especially well, and he might get traded again. And man, oh, man. These guys just gelled, and over the course of September, they were world beaters. It's it's something to say you put all these guys together. Like we mentioned, at the halfway point, nobody expected the Braves to probably even make the playoffs, let alone be in it. And then you bring in four or five different new guys to the entire team, and you got to find a way to jail. And the guys found a way to jail. I mean, that's yeah. tough to do. I played on a bunch of teams where 
it took two years for guys to come together. These guys took half a season and came together to put something out really fun. And you can hear the fans, like Courtney just mentioned, 10 rows deep, yelling, having a great time. People out as early as 4.30 in the morning to show their support. <laughs> and, I mean, this is pretty awesome, one that Atlanta fans will remember for a long time. Oh, yeah, this is a, this is a new day in this city. Uh, kind of opens the door, paves the way for more championships, right? Yes. This is bigger than baseball. It's beyond the Braves. You know, maybe the Georgia Bulldogs can get in on the action. Speak it up. The Falcons yeah. can oh, get in. Keep talking, Courtney. There you go. It's a new era. It's a new state now. No, that's exactly Speak right. There so we go. people have a lot to celebrate today. They yeah, do. and but that's what you want. I mean, the, the fact that we can have everybody out tonight, I mean, today, and be able to enjoy this, it just speaks volumes to where we were. I mean, you think about where we were a year and a half ago when everybody was inside and not be able to celebrate like this. Yeah. It happened at the perfect time where everybody can come out and be together. Yeah. But it's interesting you bring it up, Courtney, because you know these are competitive people. They're already thinking in some back corner of their mind about next year. And it's so hard to repeat in this game. Uh, in 1995, they won the World Series, of course, and they got back to the series against the Yankees in 1996. Won the first two games by a lot in New York City. Came back, uh, and they were ahead in game three, and Jim Leyritz hit that home run off of Mark Wohlers. No, no need to bring to dwell on that today. But, you know, the bottom line is they, they had a 2 nothing lead, and they're back home, and they're, they're leading, and they lost four games in a row. There are a lot of really, really good teams out there, and you, you have to have a little bit of luck to go along with your, your excellence. And the, the, the Braves had that down the stretch, too. It, even though they had, as you pointed out earlier, shocked a lot of adversity along the way this year uh, and injuries, and even during the World Series with Charlie Morton getting the broken leg, for the most part, you know, down the stretch, with the guys they had, they were healthy. And you know what's yeah, interesting? There's Freddie Freeman, the oh, yeah, face Fre of the yeah, franchise. <laughs> 12 seasons, 12 years with the Braves and five-time all-star and winning his first championship i mean that has got to feel good he's got that sense of completion even though he did just enter free agency so a lot of braves country is a little nervous hoping we can sign him up keep him here at home i don't know i have a feeling he's not going anywhere well guys. you know the, the, the great thing about freddie is he showed up in the big moments we've seen over the years where the star players they have a down series or they don't play to their capabilities Freddie in the postseason, let alone uh, the postseason, had five home runs, led the team with five home runs, and had 11 RBIs. That tied the team with uh, Eddie Rosario. So you're talking about stepping up in the big moments. We saw him in game six, oh. hit a big monster <laughs> shot. Oh, I mean, he continually was the guy, was good on first base. I yeah. mean, Freddie was the ultimate, what you expect, brave over the past, you know, 12 years. Well, you're exactly right. And I think when he looks back on this, he said hitting a home run in the World Series was pretty cool. That's yeah. what he was going to say after the fact. But I, I think he'll be most proud, perhaps, of that home run that he hit against the Brewers against Josh Hader. Oh, Probably the best closer in all of baseball. Steps up in the bottom of the eighth and hits that homer that sealed the deal for, for the Braves. You know, we won the World Series, but we had to beat a really good Milwaukee team and then beat the defending world champions just even to get to the World Series, and Freddie was a big part of that for sure. I mean, the point you bring up about here is a really good one because he was practically unhittable exactly. throughout exactly. the year and in postseason and then late in the ball game. You got their star versus our star, and he came through. Speaks volumes about Freddie. I mean, you want him around here forever. Hopefully they can figure out a way to keep him here. Because obviously, you know, he's a fan favorite. We saw him yesterday when he, uh, what was it, yesterday when he was getting off the plane, a couple days ago when they were getting off the plane, and he was taking the trophy all the way around, and everybody was going crazy. You could tell he was soaking up that moment. And there's Jorge Soler there with the MVP trophy. Guys, I'm going to tell you, I was there when he hit that home run in yeah. game six. What that sound like? St still oh. hasn't landed. <laughs> it was an explosion. I mean, it was unreal. And I looked over. We were sitting in the, the left center field. And I looked over and I said, I think that ball is out of the stadium. Yeah. And he knocked it out of the stadium. It was pretty and cool. There's the Eddie other MVP, Eddie Rosario, right, of the uh, NLCS, yes. who just couldn't not hit the ball against the Dodgers. They you know, their manager admitted they just had no way to get him out. He's just been so clutch. Every time he came up to bat, he really performed throughout the entire run. And you know what's, what's interesting is when Soler went down, let me see Charlie Morton there. Is, well, we hope he's good. I know he's probably he's had the chair. surgery on it. Yeah, he's got a yeah, chair. He'll, he'll, he'll be good come spring. But remember in this fine. playoffs, Jorge Soler went down. He had the COVID issue. Right. And then that's when yeah. Eddie Rosario really took off. 
and then he came back and hit and a home run at his first, first step back. at bat, I mean, which you, is a you, world you can't series. write it. Right. It's a World Series record. <laughs> it's never been done. A first at bat, first inning of a World Series. Uh, he hit that huge homer and ended up with three homers for the whole World Series, which right. is tied with very few. He's got a uh, small company with some greats, including the great Hank Aaron, actually. Yeah. On the Remember, race. it was Dansby Swanson in game four who hit the home run. Solaire came up next, uh, and he hit the homer that was the deciding in that 3-2 game. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. I mean, just think about how many guys we just named. I mean, we went up and down a lineup of guys who were making plays throughout the postseason. And that's why this is so fun, because it's a total team effort from the guys at the plate. We haven't even talked about the guys that's been in the bullpen. We had a couple bullpen games throughout the series, and those guys came up and played well. DJ got it rocking right there. <laughs> <laughs> this has just been so fun for people. I mean, everybody who's come out is had a great time just uh, taking it all in and I think for a lot of people it's still sinking in that you can kind of breathe that sigh of relief it's over they got the job done brought another championship to our city you got bragging rights I mean I know a lot of people from a lot of different other states and cities and they are so prideful about what their teams have done yeah. and I think this is what Atlanta fans want they want to have some kind of bragging rights on right. doing something like this so I'm glad that Atlanta fans can now hold the chest, pump it out a little bit, and be yeah. excited about yeah. what they got going on. Yeah. Well, you talk about the bullpen. They were spectacular throughout the entire postseason. And t nobody more than Tyler Matzik. In fact, Alex Anthopoulos said that he could very easily have been the MVP of the NLCS against the Dodgers. You remember that game six performance when he came in with guys on second and third, no outs, and struck out the side, and then uh, got three outs in the next inning. Uh, sort of paved the way for us to, to to win the pennant and in a position to to get to the World Series in the first place. So you're exactly right. A total team effort all the way up and down and uh, just so much to celebrate today. Russ, I went back and looked up some numbers because I, I thought that he pitched really well, but I didn't know he pitched this well. He had an ERA of 1.7, which is really wow. good. He had five holes and 15 innings and 24 strikeouts in the postseason. In the postseason. I mean, he was... He and was this is a guy well. who was playing in the Independent League in Texas for the Air Hogs <laughs> two and a half years ago. So, Man. boy, that's a guy who stuck it out through thick and thin and, and really persisted. He's, he's one of the comeback stories, obviously, of the year. And then you talk about the closer, Will Smith. His numbers are just as good. In postseason, 11 postseason games, he only gave up five hits, zero earned runs, and 18 strikeouts. So you know he was going to be ready to go, 37 saves on the season. But... Throughout the year, there were times where we know we were a little dicey when he came in the game, wondering if he's going to close it out. But when he got in the postseason, it was almost lights out, and he closed the door on a lot of teams. Make mention of the fact that he's, of course, from Noonan. Uh, Doug Evans, uh, one of our excellent reporters, did a, a story not long ago about how he works out in the off season uh, down there in, in Peachtree City, as a yeah. matter of fact, and yeah. and. Uh, just, just a regular guy, but he's got people who care about him in town who are uh, really celebrating what you say. No earned runs in the entire postseason. That's that's incredible that's against incredible. You know, a team like Houston, which was the best hitting team in oh. all of baseball, to accomplish that was really something else. So the parade making its way out here to our location, which is right here at Truist Park at the Battery is coming up Cobb Parkway and you see a lot of your favorite players Jock Peterson there's Jock yep there he is again blooper who doesn't love blooper? Uh, blooper has to make a pair like a bloop <laughs> bloop got his own he got his own fire truck looks like yeah he's got oh, some yeah. moves bloop's got some moves I mean I'm not sure if you blooper is one of the best mascots in the league oh bloop's a fan favorite no doubt about it uh, everybody loves blooper Well, all kinds of stuff planned here at Truist Park throughout the afternoon as well as the Braves make their way here. There's a stage set up on the field for them to, to have a word with the fans who, who are gathering. You take a look over at Truist Park. The, the, the seats are starting to fill up. Yeah, yeah fans are starting to come in. It's, it's really packed behind us here at the Battery. And we've seen fans coming in for a long time. And look, I mean, just look how deep it is as you come in. That is a massive amount of people. I mean, just look at 
the amount of people who turn out on a Friday, a school day, a work day, but again, a lot of people have that off now because we had to be here. We had to celebrate this and people even sure if, did show up. Even if they up. didn't have it off, they took it off. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, so it, much excitement. It's truly fantastic. And as you point out, I, some of the crowd, at least here at Truist Park, probably a, attracted to the to the fact that uh, Ludacris and Big Boy are going to be performing. Oh, yeah. This Who afternoon. doesn't love that? Our Claire Sims is along the parade route. She's at the end of Battery Avenue. And Claire, we are seeing a bird's eye view of how many people are out. But what is it like down there on the ground? Yeah, well, guys, people just got really excited because we just started to see our first parade vehicles here. We are standing in the battery right across from the Roxy Theater. And I apologize if you can't hear me, but the sirens are going. But I want you to take a look, Jim. Look up at the top of Live at Battery Atlanta, the Sports and Social Club. You can see people just hanging over the balcony. We've got people probably 20 deep or so here on the sidewalk and all the way across up pretty much anywhere that people could stand to see this parade, they have found a spot. And if you look all the way down the road here, there are just people everywhere. They're standing up on walls. They've got barricades somewhere in the middle of that crowd, but it's really hard to see. And everybody's got their cell phones. They've got, they're taking pictures. They're going live for family and friends who couldn't be here themselves. We've got a lot of people with signs. Uh, their t-shirts, lots of uh, World Series merchandise. People have got their sweatshirts on, their t-shirts over their sweatshirts to try to stay warm. So everybody's really excited. And the, the players and the coaches have not made it quite yet, uh, but people here don't care. They're just excited to see even just the first cars of this parade. Uh, the Cobb County Sheriff just got a big round of applause from the crowd as well. So people are just excited to be here, to take part in this winning atmosphere. We've heard the chop going on throughout the crowd for most of the afternoon. And uh, look, even Cobb County Chair Lisa Cupid is getting in on the fun. So uh, this has just been a really great environment and people have been having fun out here for hours. We talked to one couple who got their spot at eight o'clock this morning because they wanted to see uh, <laughs> every, every second of this parade. And it's been fun because we've had security staff coming through and people have been giving them a round of applause. They've been uh, clapping for the Cobb County police officers, Cobb County sheriff's deputies, all the first responders who are out here. So people have just been having such a great time, enjoying the atmosphere and uh, really soaking up this win. Claire, thanks very much. Well, what a celebration. We've been talking about the players and talking about the fans, you know, seemingly dozens deep there. Uh, we haven't talked a lot yet about Brian Snitker. Of course, we're going to hear from him on the field later on. But, boy, after four-plus decades with the Braves organization, uh, to see him get a chance to be a World Series champion, you know, following in the, in the footsteps of Bobby Cox 26 years ago, you, you can't write it any better than that, can you? Yeah, he's been with the Braves since 1977. And I, he had to think the guy has worked all these years. Maybe he had put it out of his mind that he might have never oh, yeah. gotten to experience this, a World Series championship. But now here he is. I mean, you said it really well, Russ. Just an incredible ending. Not ending, really, because he's not going anywhere. We no. certainly hope not. But no. Just a, a great thing for him to have added to his experience and memories in his years with the Braves. It's a great feel-good story. I mean, you talk about, you, you mentioned it, being a part of the organization and seeing some of the bad times, seeing some of the not-so-good times where you're losing a bunch of games. But now you have the ability to say, I am a World Series champion. And I remember seeing the video of him being the third base coach and, you know, looking totally different than he does now. Yeah. And now to be able to take this team that everybody thought was just an average team and turn them into World Series champs is one of the best feel-good stories of the entire season, and you love it. Yeah, yeah the, the impression you have, obviously, is that uh, these guys love Brian Snicker for who he is, and that, that that meant a lot as they were coming down the stretch and, and, and had to have faith that they could actually do this. And, and he was asked, when did you start to believe it? He said, you know what? When we beat the Brewers, who were a really, really good pitching baseball team, I started to think, you know, maybe we're going to win this darn thing. And they did. <laughs> 
we're starting to hear the cheers from people here at the Battery. They do have a screen where they can see the parade progressing to their area, but also they're getting pretty close to where we are yeah. because you saw Claire's position. She was at the end of Battery Avenue, but you can just hear the cheers there of people behind yeah, you us. You can hear them right there. There they are. They're they on are Battery definitely Avenue. definitely closer. Yeah. And really fun. This may be, okay, you see Ronald Acuna there right there, the edge right there, taking it all in. Obviously a big part of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see some swords, so we may see uh, Heredia there. But as you can see, the excitement on there is just as much as the fans are. And I love that the guys are giving it back to the fans just as much as the fans are giving it to them. Cause, yeah, no, it's so, so mean, true. There's some guys who go through their whole career and never get an opportunity to play in the playoffs, let alone win a World Series. So it's great to be able to – you see Alex Anthopoulos right there riding by. You know he's happy. Oh, <laughs> come on. And you know, he was I, key in making those decisions that really led us to where we are with this roster winning this World Series. With, without a doubt. I mean, Alex Anthopoulos made this happen. And then, of course, he didn't get a chance to enjoy the clinching game six because he was home uh, with COVID. There he is. Uh, That's there's, Brian Snicker there's Brian and Snicker. his wife. And yeah. She was very emotional at the end of game six, just talking about what an incredible night that was for her husband, but also her son, who is a, a coach on the Astros. There's Freddie Freeman, the one everybody came to see. There you go. Is that his wife, Chelsea, there? Uh, Char Charlie's certainly become uh, a household <laughs> name. Charlie, his, his son was on the field after the big win. No doubt so about cute. it. So cute. And certainly, uh, you know, I, I don't remember who I was talking to, you, Russ, maybe, but that night, uh, Freddie, Freddie's wife and son were there on the field, and I just was thinking he must be too young to realize how significant this moment is. But one day he's going to look back when he gets older and realize, man, that was pretty awesome when my dad won the World Series. You know what? Right now, I think a kid of his stature, he's probably been a part of this for since he was born. He this probably is doesn't think, yeah, this is normal for him. <laughs> no. So he probably felt like it was just another big game. My oh, dad yeah. won, and everybody's excited. Well, maybe he gets it today. He's like, wait, this isn't what this normally is different. happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, we he told, he told the story. Parade. He told the story on himself that his son wanted him to get into the All Star game so that he could meet Fernando Tatis, <laughs> who's his favorite. Player. Not for you, Dad, but I want to meet Fernando Tatis. Yeah. Man, that's humbling. <laughs> oh man, well, that's awesome though, because. As a dad, I know we love, we got kids, we, we want our kids to, you know, have the best and see the best. And to see the excitement on his son's face when he yeah. got to meet Fernando yeah. Tatis yeah. was pretty cool. We saw, saw yeah. the picture in the dugout. So to do that for your son, I think probably meant more to him than anything. Well, I remember when my kids were five years old, they thought everybody's dad was on TV. <laughs> he, he probably thinks everybody's dad is as cool a right. uh, baseball player. Is, what, what team does your dad play for? Right. Uh, when he gets a chance to look back at the video uh, <laughs> in 10, well, you know, oh, yeah. 5, 10, 15 years, he's going to realize just how remarkable this was. Well, it helps that these guys are all so down to earth. It's incredible just seeing how, you know, humble and, really just pedestrian they are. I mean, you watch those those news conferences with Brian Snicker and him too. He was so relaxed. He said, there's no pressure. It's just a World Series. I mean, there there's go. no pressure with that, right? I mean, Eddie Rosario was, certainly didn't feel the pressure. But every time he got up to bat in the NLCS, he hit the ball. Practice. Which is unbelievable. I mean, he's the leadoff batter. You expect him to get on base. And he just was crushing it with power. He was getting on base every time, base hitting it. And you guys talk about these guys being relaxed. I remember game six. Freddie Freeman was literally just laying on the field, relaxing before the game, laying up against one of the carps and just chilling like it was just another day at the ballpark. That's fantastic. Hard to tell with the hat on who we're looking at there. Is that is that Eddie? It's Eddie Rosario okay. on the right hand side. Yes, he's really he's, he's, he's the, the he's the, mo the best manicured. Uh, player on the team with the facial hair. You, you, you so can he's tell, got the fresh lineup. You, you, exactly. You can tell he put some time into it. Well, Charlie Morton, of course, uh, so incredibly tough in game one, broke his his leg on that comebacker and, and stayed in the game for a while. That's what that's what got me was he pitched a whole nother like three or four players. Yeah. The good news is that uh, He's expected to be all healed up by the springtime, and he's one of the people that we know is going to be back for this team. It's really exciting as it and as the a, roar grow, a crush of grows people. here in the battery as they get closer and closer to Truist Park. Oh, yeah, it's getting loud in here now as they get closer.
unbelievable times where you get a chance to just enjoy this and take it in. I mean, we talk about it for the fans, but even more for the players to work so hard. They play 180-some games a year. It's a long season, isn't it? Long season. And and that's part partly what uh, Jock was pointing out in that great article he wrote in the Players' Tribune. He said, you know, we got to slog this out. If we, if we don't find ways to to keep each other's spirits up, you know, it can, it can get stale. And and they weren't stale at the end, that's for sure. And I think he deserves some of the credit for that. Oh, yeah. Look at all the confetti showering, the players, the fans. There's A.J. Mentor. A.J. Mentor came. Dansby Swanson. The hometown. Tyler Dansby. Matzik there. Dansby did such a great job. Uh, How clutch was Dansby, though? I mean, early in the year, he was batting at the top of the lineup. By the World Series, he was a ninth hitter. Still crushing home runs. Right. I mean, he had that, that two-run homer. Uh, after Soler had the three-run homer, he's the one who made it five to nothing there in that clinching game. And he's a hometown guy. He's from right here in Cobb oh, yeah. County, Marietta. I mean, what an incredible feeling that must be to be celebrating this in your hometown. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. Let's go back now to our Claire Sims. She's on the parade route on Battery Avenue. Claire, the fans pretty fired up as the as the players are passing through. Yeah, the fans are having a great time. I have to tell you, one of my favorite parts is the ground crew just went by. And they, it wasn't just the ground crew, they also had all their lawn mowers. So they're the guys who keep Truist Park looking really nice. But with each group that comes by, it's just a new party. And you guys saw, I don't know if you saw it a second ago, when Dansby Swanson came by on a double-decker bus, somebody from the crowd actually threw a beer all the way up to the second level of that bus, and Dansby, he actually caught it cracked it open, said thank you so much to the fans. So it is really a party, not just here for the fans, but for the players to enjoy their hard work as well. And I don't know if you can tell, but the confetti cannon, it came through just a few minutes ago. There's confetti absolutely everywhere, all over the ground. So if things weren't festive enough, now we've got that. <laughs> and I will tell you, you guys were talking about the uh, entertainment that we're going to hear from later on in the party inside Truist Park and the first vehicles that actually came through here were probably about 1 30 this afternoon and I'm pretty sure that it was Ludacris and Big Boy getting here uh, ahead of their concert this afternoon and the crowd again just every single vehicle that goes by they are so excited and Jim take a look we're taking a picture you ready this is how excited people are we're live on TV and we're taking selfies at the same time, guys. I'm going to send it back to you. <laughs> right, dance me with a good catch. <laughs> he didn't throw it to Freddie Freeman. He opened up, he drank it himself. Russ, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody from the battery to throw up a beer for you to shotgun it like Dan just did. <laughs> All right. I don't know if we can do that and get away with it like they can, but man. I'll, I'll, t I'll take one for the team. That's yeah. all right. That's all right. That's okay. Oh, That's man. What a... Helicopters all over the place yeah. uh, documenting the moment as uh, the team makes its way here to Truist Park. Dansby's bus, I think, was sort of toward the end, so uh, they're getting close to their final destination. Yeah, we were talking about Dansby Swanson being a hometown guy, and we talked to him uh, during the World Series run, and it was incredible just hearing from him how he didn't really understand it when he was traded here and he, he just didn't fully grasp, didn't know the reason for it. But looking back now, he said it all worked out. He said he's a man of faith. His faith and family are really important to him. And he said, God always has a plan. And he talked about how that really carried him through his faith. Um, he met his girlfriend Mallory here as well. Yeah, I mean, she's a world champion yeah. as well in the U.S. women's soccer team. So, so now they got a World Cup. They got a World Series. I mean, yeah. they got a lot of nice hardware in their yes, home. Yes, they right do. Now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. This must be a good day for him and for her, his whole family, of course. His parents were so proud of him. All right. Who do we have here? So that ceremony starts at 3.30. About an hour from now as they make their way into the Battery, Truist Park area, there will be a ceremony at 3.30, and that is followed by Luda and Big Boy. And I'm sure fans will stick around for quite some time after that, just uh, taking this all in. I don't think there's any question about that. 
Now, it's hard. I know that some of the, the players, Freddie Freeman among them, are on uh, the pickup trucks. Uh, and, and others are on these open air buses. Uh, there's another shot of, of Jock Peterson on the top right there, number 22. Uh, looks like he's all out of pearls at this point. <laughs> but uh, maybe he can pick he, up another but box. He's, he's still swinging. Is he still throwing Still throwing him. <laughs> still <laughs> throwing him. <laughs> well, I tell you, the, the city has fallen in love with him. There are no two ways about it. It's fun for the the players that they have a couple of family members joining them. Uh, I guess I don't know whether Blooper has family or not. He looks like he's by himself. But but the players <laughs> were allowed to you know invite somebody from the family to join in the celebration to yeah. sort of take it all in from their perspective too, which is fun. Yeah, we saw Freddie Freeman's wife Chelsea and their son on their truck. And I mean, as you I said, mean, no one with Blooper, no Blooper Jr. I think Blooper gets more more chants and cheers than anybody else. <laughs> Did you see him at the Hawks game last night? He oh. was on fire. He, I mean, he had learned the choreography with the cheerleaders. Yeah. It was amazing. I mean, whoever's in that costume deserves a raise. I think A.J. Minter was there last night and uh, Jock Peterson also. Actually, yeah. Jock had something to say, uh, you know, saying that he hoped to see everybody out at the parade. And, uh, and he said to Braves country, we love you. Yeah. And that was really right. impactful. Jock may have made probably the biggest impression on everybody here. I mean, just the way he went about playing, the way he went about carrying himself. Jock is just one of those lovable guys I think everybody can like relate to. You feel like you can go out and have a beer with him. You go out and have fun with him. You, he's going to have a good time and never gets too high, too low. Yeah. I mean, the catch he made in that game six where he was sliding was right. a huge play. If he doesn't make roll. that play, yeah. they probably score a couple of runs in that inning, but right. he came up big. and Eddie Rosario, I'd say the two biggest catches leading up to this Ooh. World Series. Oh, no doubt yeah. about it. I mean, he named himself Super Rosario after, <laughs> after that catch. He, he that really it. caused something. He earned that. Yeah. That was incredible. He said, I just put my glove up and I felt the ball land. I didn't even see it anymore. I mean, that's incredible. It really was. It really was. I don't think the team could believe it. The teammates could believe it. And it was good because it was taken away from Altuve, I think it was, who was up to bat, who hit a rocket out there, and he just happened to find it, and there we go. All was good. And almost every time Altuve got on base, uh, he scored a run. (laughs) Yeah. He's a guy you want to keep off base. Got to give credit where credit is due. Houston was a very, very good baseball team, which which makes it all the more satisfying, I think, for the Braves. particularly with that resounding exclamation point of a win there uh, in game six, seven to nothing. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't close at any point during that game, so we didn't have to have uh, you know, a heart attack, which is so often the case as an, an Atlanta Braves fan. And, and I think they made it clear that they're the best team in baseball, or certainly were the best team in baseball for the last two months. And one guy we haven't talked about yet, and we probably haven't seen him yet, but was a huge part of what the Braves did Ozzy Albies. Talk about oh, yeah. in game six, he goes from batting third to batting seventh. But in that ball game, he had two hits. He right. had walked. They finally got him at the end. But Ozzy was huge. Every Whatever he got on base the other day on game six, he scored as well. So He made a lot of pitchers nervous <laughs> stealing made, those bases. Oh, <laughs> anytime he got on base, he made everybody nervous. Yeah, and it's a good point you raised, Russ. You know, nobody can say the Braves had a a win with an asterisk next to it. You know, they fought hard for this win. They beat a lot of good teams, the Brewers, the Dodgers, the Astros. You know, and so nobody can ever say that Atlanta's second World World Series championship came because somebody made it easy for us. All right, we're going to take a little break at this point, and when we come back, we'll go inside Truist Park. We'll hear from the team and show you all the festivities. We'll be right back.
It's a great time to get connected to what's going on in your community. Sign up for Fox 5's daily email newsletters like the Morning Brief and get contest updates and breaking news alerts sent straight to your inbox. Sign up now at fox5atlanta.com slash email. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Atlanta Braves World Series Championship Parade. Doesn't <laughs> yeah. that have a nice ring to it? The I World am Courtney Series. Bryant with my co-anchors Russ Spencer and DJ Shockley. And man, what a showing there has been today with fans lining the streets from downtown Atlanta all the way up here to Truist Park and the Battery here in Cobb County. It's been incredible. Incredible is an understatement. I mean, to be able to sit here and watch this and be a part of it, as a guy who's born and raised from here, right. it means a lot. And obviously from all the fans showing, it's showing exactly how supportive everybody of the Braves has brought everybody together for one common goal, which is to support these Braves. And they are giving us everything we wanted today and just showing so much love, especially to all the fans who are out there watching, who are out there. We heard fans say they were there at 4.30 in the morning. Man. Now you got fans who are out there just braving the cold weather, a little windy, but you don't get this happen all the time, so it's a it's a great celebration for everybody. Yeah, I think everybody loves the Braves. In part, I think because it's pretty clear that the Braves love each other, and I, yeah. and I expected that there would be a big crowd out here, given what we've seen in the battery uh, during the course uh, of the postseason. Even on nights when they were playing in Houston or playing uh, in Los Angeles, <laughs> folks packed this area. I, I'm not sure I expected to see ten deep on Cobb Park. <laughs> I mean, that is really something, and and the fact that again. Uh, the school districts closed in uh, Fulton County, Cobb, and others to, to allow young people to enjoy the celebration either here in person or watching on TV uh, was another nice touch. Yeah, it is amazing to see so many people out here because it took commitment to get here. If they're, oh, yeah. if they're in the picture that you're seeing right now, these people got here hours ago. All the roads around Truist Park were closed off from 10 a.m. this morning, and so that's at least four hours ago now, and just amazing to see this many people dedicated. You know, I think that's, I think that's one great way to describe the fan base to this team, and it stretches through across states, across the country, really. There's so many fans who probably would have loved to be here today but couldn't make it. I know they're so – Atlanta fans are passionate. We know that yeah. about, their, about their teams. They love hard. They love strong. And that's why – it's great that this is happening because we talked about it. Everybody thought it was a curse for so long, so everybody expected this to be pretty fun and pretty cool. And uh, I think we got our man Justin Felder, who is inside Truist Park right now. Justin, I know you've been in there for a while and have came across a lot of fans. What's the atmosphere like inside of Truist right now? Shock, it's getting real. It's getting crowded. And enjoy hearing me for now because we're about to hear from everybody. Check it out. All right, all right, we've been hanging out with the Williams family from Peachtree City. Tell me about this experience. Oh my God, this is amazing. Like the curse has been broken off of our city. We are winners, like for real. This is our moment. This is our time. Go Brian! We were, we were just calling all your friends to turn on Fox 5, so hopefully you're watching Fox 5. Tell me about your shirt, first of all. I love this shirt. Um, well, I got this shirt from, um, I really don't know. But um, I got this shirt. It's really cute. Y'all go get it. And... <laughs> What's it like being here with the celebration, watching the Braves? Tell me what you're thinking right now. Amazing. Like, it's crazy. The Williams family enjoying it. Who else we got back here? Who do we have? Right here? Everybody. Where are you guys from? Marietta. Atlanta, tell me about your favorite part of the World Series run. Has that ball landed yet, or is it still in outer space? It is still going. Let's take a look around out here. We are we are kind of blocking some traffic here. We'll take a couple steps here. We are live inside Truist Park. As you can see, the fans are starting to fill in. We're being very careful walking down some stairs. We were blocking an awful lot of traffic. When we get to the bottom of these, though, 
Eric, let's take a look out towards second base. As you can see, that's the stage where the entire presentation is going to be going on. They got the pennants right behind the stage. You're going to be adding some new numbers to that. Of course, we're going to have the team coming out here. We're going to have Big Boy. We're going to have Ludacris. And you know what happens if you wave to us while we're live on TV? Woo! We put you live on TV. Live TV. Who, what's your name and where are you from? I'm Zoe. I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Zoe, tell me about uh, what, what brings you out here today? What brings you out here is I was raised as a Braves fan, and this is just a team I grew up on, and I'm so grateful. My best friend got the tickets for us. This is Ansley. I'm just so grateful to be here. I've been loving the Braves since I was born. What's this experience like for you getting to watch the Braves win a World Series? It's been awesome. I, I watched 95 as well. I've been a Braves fan since I was born, and it's just been amazing. It's been a long time coming, but it's awesome. Go Braves! We can't let you walk away without a big group. Go Braves! Let's hear it. Go Braves! There we go. The fans are filling in, as you can see out here. We got a lot of excited fans over here. We got some photos going on. We got these guys in jerseys getting a fist bump. Fist bump right here. I, I love it. Hello, how are you? How are you? What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Erica Henriquez Choir. This is my son. Esteban. Nice to meet you nice guys. Nice to meet you. Five, five. Woo -woo! What's it been like watching this Braves World Series I run? Mean, this is absolutely beautiful. This is a chance of a lifetime, and we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We're just happy. Well, you're in the right place, I think. Esteban, who is your number one favorite Atlanta Braves player? Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. Oh, I, I love it. Good answer. Why? What do you like about him? Well, he came here when he didn't even speak English, and he's just a great player. He is a great player. He's the man. We're going to see him up there. And we got some more fans. Why don't we keep on walking? Appreciate it. Who do we got down here? What's up, guys? Where you got? What's your name? Where are you from? Hey, I'm Dave. I'm from Alabama. From Alabama? Where are you from? I'm Owen. I'm from, Al uh, I'm from Atlanta. We got some people making a long trip. We got people making a short drive. Tell me about this experience. What's it like being here? We got the, the team going to be coming in here in a little while. It's amazing. The Braves won the World Series, baby! They did. They the World Series. Let's hear from the crowd. All right, guys, we're going to keep our tour going. As we look up in the crowd right here, it's really starting to fill in. We imagine a lot of folks who are watching the parade over at the Battery slowly moseying their way over here into Truist Park as it is starting to fill up in here. Guys, we got some young Braves fans here. Can we talk to you guys? Yeah, sure. All right. How old are you? Ten. Ten years old? I am eight years old. Eight years old? I am nine. Nine? I'm seven. Seven. What do you guys remember from the last time the Braves won the World Series in 1995? Uh, I remember uh, my dad telling a lot of stories about it. Dad was talking about it. What were you doing in 1995? <laughs> I do not know. Do not know. That's probably for a very good reason. Let me get some. Who is your favorite player on the Atlanta? I, I have a guess based on your necklace, but who's your favorite player? Jorge Soler. Ooh, Jorge Soler. You had the Ozzy Albies necklace. We're mixing it up. How about you? Who's your favorite player on the Braves? Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman, a very good answer. Let's keep it walking. We're going to walk around and see some more fans. Okay. We're sorry. We are blocking traffic here. We are, we're very sorry. He was in the Junior League for the Braves. Junior League for the Braves right where? Oh, I, 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 can't, I can't say no to this. Where are we going? Right here. Is this who we're getting directed to talk to? We're, 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 we're live getting we're getting live production and direction we hear that you're a baseball player is that right tell me about uh, tell me about uh, what, what you thought as a baseball player watching this team make a run okay so first things first I'm a okay. huge Atlanta fan right yep so I'm watching the game and the thing is I've always had it in the back of my mind like it'd be amazing to see if Atlanta actually won it and then as soon as Soleil hit that bomb it was like wow this actually might be it. This might close it out. The whole season, I was like, is this going to be the one? Every year, is this going to be the one? Is this going to be the one? And then it's, we get further and further. We get further and further. And then the momentum builds up, and it's amazing. It's insane. Watching this team, how much they've grown, and actually be able to win the World Series, it's insane. We got it. We got it. We got it. What's your name? We got to hire you. You're going to be taking my job one day. You're giving me the whole breakdown of the entire World Series. Dude, that was beautiful. That was excellent. I we just heard this story from this man, which they Marquise Grissom was his coach down there. I'm going to show y'all something. This is 95. Whoa. It's 95. That's nice. I've been with the Braves since 1966 when they came to Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium. Saw Hank Aaron hit 500 all the way to 714. My granddaddy died right after he hit 714. Wow. And I've been a Braves fan, man. 
And if y'all put me on the news, man, I want my folks to see me, man. B believe it or not, you are actually on the news right now. You are both on, on news. live news, live on Fox 5 here in Truist Park. We got generations, we got all over the place, all ages, everybody coming together. Let's take another look back out here, Eric, as we continue walking around Truist Park. We are sitting up here on the visiting dugout right now. Let's take a look out on the field before we send it back to you. We got out at second base. Filling in out there, it's going to be executives, team staff, we got families, we got friends. Everybody's going to be filling in in the infield right now. We're going to continue bringing that. We're here live inside Truist Park. We got a lot of fans. Actually, I'll tell you what, we need some fans to make some noise before we send it back. Can we get some Go Braves out here? It got quiet all of a sudden. That's great stuff, Justin. Thank you so much. All right, so we're much. going to send it so back much to enthusiasm. you guys from here inside. The that was perfect, Thanks, Justin. Justin. Thank you so much for uh, showing us how much fun everybody's having as oh, they file man. in to watch this celebration. I, I think the most fun part of that was the vast, vast majority of those fans weren't alive in 1995. Yeah. So they're, <laughs> they're experiencing this for the first time. Except for that gentleman oh, towards yeah. the end who said, yes. I was here in 1966. I mean, he's a long timer. And you know what? He did bring something to mind that I think is so important not to get lost in all of today is Hank Aaron. I mean, he just passed. This was the commemorative season. We, we played most of the season with that 44 on the field. And to see the Braves close it out at a time when he is to be recognized, so many people expressed disappointment that he couldn't be celebrated at the All-Star game when the Major League Baseball moved the game out of Atlanta over that political controversy over our voting law. But to see this stage and yeah. this opportunity to elevate Hank Aaron yeah. and to celebrate his legacy, I think it's bigger than any All-Star game ever would have been. Oh, you bring without up, a doubt. Bring up Hank Aaron. How about this? How many wins did the Braves have at the break? 44. 44. How many did they win? 44. 44. <laughs> Hank Aaron was number what? 44. <laughs> it was just, it had to happen, right? I mean, yeah. everything was aligned. You know, all those little superstitious stuff comes up sometimes, yeah. but it's pretty cool when some stuff like happened. Like, so Hank Aaron uh, absolutely was a big part of this organization, and for the Braves to do it with the 44 in the field, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen the image that somebody put together of uh, uh, Hank Aaron and then sort of in the mist giving a high five to Freddie oh, yeah, Freeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of choked up the first <laughs> yeah. time I saw that when it's made its way and Brian around Sn on social media. Brian Snicker yeah. was emotional talking about the tribute that uh, the team did. I don't recall if it was game four or five when we had uh, his family, his wife, his widow Ronnie, and right. his grandson were here. And um, he, Brian Snicker was emotional just talking about how special that was being able to recognize his family and to remember his legacy here. What a way to do him justice, man. I, I know his family was happy and, and so many of the fans are happy too. Yeah, no, no question about it. Let's go out and, and show you what's going on, uh, not only here in the Battery, but also inside Truist Park. Uh, as the Braves are gathering around the stage now, they've made their way inside uh, Truist Park. And I guess we're gonna get a chance to not only hear from Brian Snitker, uh, perhaps Alex Anthopoulos, who we've given credit as general manager for a lot of great moves before the trade deadline, but from some of the favorite players that uh, the fans mentioned when, when Justin was asking them. If people are wondering, is this a uh, copy of the other night? No, this is happening right now. <laughs> right. I know it looks similar yeah. to the other night, <laughs> but this is the same crowd. F fans have come out. Rush has mentioned that the Braves are now inside Truist Park. And they're going to get a chance to celebrate them even more with the fans that are inside. And there are a lot of festivities going to go on inside Truist to continue to celebrate these Braves and their World Series run. And it's going to be cool to hear from them as well. I think, you know, get a chance oh, to yeah. hear from your favorite guys like a Freddie Freeman or get to hear from uh, Coach Schnicker. A lot of people weren't in Houston and couldn't hear him speak after the game. Right. I'm sure you get a chance to hear him talk about it. And I'm sure it would be another emotional moment for a lot of these guys. Uh, and then... Ultimately, can't wait to see what the rings look like, you know. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants be. to see that. TJ, you were in Houston when the Braves closed it out, when they won in game six, and you said there were a lot of Braves fans oh. at Minute Maid Park. Oh, it was awesome to see. I mean, I remember literally walking through the concourse, and there were so many Braves fans 
tomahawk chopping, being loud, and then once the game was over, you can see them. They just let all the Braves fans come down right behind the dugout, and that whole entire section was just full of Braves fans cheering, going loud. So I could imagine what it would have been like if they'd won it here on Sunday. Yeah. But the Braves had a lot of support in Houston, that's for sure. A lot of Braves fans. Even in about the eighth inning, the Braves fans that were inside of Houston were chopping and they tried to drown them out with music in yeah. there, but the Braves fans were not allowed. They kept going. It was just fun to watch. And we saw them behind you. Oh, when you yeah. were live out there after the game, probably 30, 40 minutes had passed, and there was a huge group of Braves fans in one section, and they were chanting. They were chopping. I mean, they would not go home. <laughs> they did not want to leave, and they knew how special it was. They knew this was once in a lifetime. I mean, you yeah. think about it, if, you know, we, don't, we hope this doesn't happen, but last time, you know, the Braves were there in 1999, Obviously, 22 years ago, and then now you say it can happen again in 22 years, 2040-something? No. no. That's crazy. So the fact that people get a chance to enjoy this right now and know it doesn't happen all the time because, like you mentioned, there were a lot of good teams. The Braves oh, had to yeah. beat a lot of good teams oh, to get absolutely. to the World Series and win the World Series. It just doesn't happen like that. It, it all came together, and now you have to celebrate it when it's here. They well, earned they, every they, single moment of today. Yeah. And they've got a core of a great team. So you take nothing for granted. But it's not beyond the realm of possibility particularly if they signed Freddie Freeman, who says no. his heart's in Atlanta. We know yeah. there's a lot of money other places tempting him, but if he stays in Atlanta, you know, we could be back sitting here. You know in the back of their mind those guys as they're enjoying this moment. Part of them's thinking about next year. Could, could we do this again? You know, you know, Russ, you know what I think about fun. when you say that is, I, we'll talk about it on the other end, but I got something to, to pose to you when we come back uh, <laughs> right, about we'll uh, what you just <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> It's a great time to get connected to what's going on in your community. Sign up for Fox 5's daily email newsletters like the Morning Brief and get contest updates and breaking news alerts sent straight to your inbox. Sign up now at fox5atlanta.com slash email. I want to tell you, and we don't like, you know, Tampa Bay too much, right? I mean, Tampa is a big thing, Tom Brady and all that. When they won a Super Bowl last year, a lot of guys took a lot less money. A lot of guys came back because they knew they had the opportunity to go to a possible another Super Bowl this year. You just mentioned a lot of guys on this team, if they come back and they have a chance to play, got a chance to do it again like Tampa Bay is trying to do. So a lot of people do that. Nobody can believe Tampa brought back all 22 starters on their team. Right. Can the Braves do it too? That would be fun to watch and see. Well, and Freddie Freeman has made the point. He spent almost half his life as part of the Braves yeah. organization. So if all things being equal, or maybe not entirely equal, but almost yeah. equal, right. he might decide to stay. Yeah. I think these guys just really like each other. Oh, you know, sure. I think there's got to be a point where you say, well, money is one thing, but camaraderie, that brotherhood, you know, you can't really buy that. That's why. That's why. That's why you guys are so good together because you guys like each other. So it's, it's, it's what makes good TV, right? Right. 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 Well, so just to kind of bring you up to speed on what's going on here, this is an overhead look at what's going on. The parade started in downtown Atlanta. It progressed up here through Cobb Parkway into the stadium. The players are starting to make their way in and around the stadium, but it looks like that's 
one bus of players that's getting bombarded by fans <laughs> right now. But at any rate, this picture right now is showing just the hordes of fans, thousands and thousands of people who have been gathered outside the ballpark who are now making their way inside because at 3.30 there is to be a ceremony. We're going to hear from some of those key players we've been talking about. Freddie Freeman, Eddie Rosario, Ozzy Albies, Jorge Soler, Brian Snicker. Uh, they're all, you know, a few of them might speak. And then after that, a huge concert with Ludacris and Big Boy. So. There's a lot ahead, and now everybody is trying to make their way through those gates and get in so they don't miss any of it. Yeah, and it's all free, which is the great part about it. So you had to register ahead of time to show a free ticket, and obviously a lot of people who are on the parade route are making their way inside. So they may delay the beginning of that, but let's, in the meantime, let's toss back to Justin Felder. Lots of fun fan stories, and, and Justin's catching up with lots of the fans. Justin? All right, guys, we saw in World Series, uh, uh, the game six, we saw what happens when Jorge Soler really gets a hold of a ball, right? He hit a ball out of Minute Maid Park in Houston. Game five, he hit one that was nearly a home run here in Truist Park. I'm here with my friend Paige. Why don't you take over the story from here? Yeah, so season ticket holders, we were at game five of the World Series, super pumped, and then line drive looked like it was going to be a home run. Hits me in the face. Line drive, almost a home run, right in the face. Check out this sign. We got we got the ice pack down here. Look at the top middle page, looking very sad. Uh, we got we got a screen grab from TV. We got a, a much happier page with a little black and blue mark. What were you thinking? Were you were you so excited that you lost track for a second? I mean, as soon as it hit me, I was like, first of all, where's the ball? And then second of all, I got up to the emergency area and I was like, I gotta get back to the game. So I only missed one inning. <laughs> that is very impressive. Did you guys get the ball or was somebody kind enough? Did you get it right away or was somebody kind enough? Was kind enough to give us the ball. So we did not get it at the start, but we got it. So a lot of Astros fans a lot of Astros fans, they saw that home run in game six, and they said, whoa, were you just not surprised at all? No, I was like, yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> yeah, right down the left field line again. What's it like being here uh, with a souvenir and with, I assume, uh, a big bump? It's incredible. We just want Soler to sign it, so we're hoping someday. We know, Jorge Soler, you're a big Fox 5 fan. I know you're watching right now, Jorge. Come find our friend Paige. Who do we got here? Come on, we're, we're recording this. We're, we're bringing it. I'm so, you thought you'd stay out of it, but no. Oh, I tried. Hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm Brian. I'm Paige's boyfriend. I'm the guy who uh, only got ball. one hand on the ball. <laughs> oh, you, oh, so you slowed it down? So, uh, yeah, about one mile an hour. They deserve season tickets. Oh, yeah. They need season tickets. I, Come I, on, I guess they, 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 they need season tickets maybe behind the net next time. So I got to add, I'm going to whisper. Were you mad? Were you a little mad at him? You didn't, you didn't dive? I, I mean, a little bit, but... <laughs> I, he tried. No glove this time. I don't think they're hitting any balls. No. Uh, you know what? I, I don't think they're hitting any today, but if there are, a real, yeah, I think we got it this time. We're up in the 400 section. I think we're okay up there. I think you're safe this time. Let's take one more look at this poster, and I love this. He's the real MVP for not hitting me in the nose. Jorge Soler, we know he's got massive power to hit home runs, also to do a little bit of damage. Check this out. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. Foul, no foul balls today. This is a very safe, family-friendly production. We'll send it back out to you guys. <laughs> she looks great considering she caught it with That's her face. What yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. No yeah. broken nose. And yeah. she said that. You're the real MVP for not breaking my nose, right? <laughs> to take oh, a baseball off the face is not good. I've had that happen to me before. Ouch. Doesn't feel good. But yeah. she said she just went up, hey. Saw the emergency and then came back down and said, I couldn't finish it, couldn't yeah. miss the game. I mean, <laughs> she's she is smiling. a trooper. Yeah, she took that foul ball to the base and is still happy about it. Just I, goes to show how much people love Jorge Soler, right? Well, I mean, that's one of the stories you think about. Now they have something to talk about for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. and she got the ball, which actually kind of surprises me. I was I was hit by a baseball. I mean, if it goes off your face, I think somebody has to give you the ball, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, look, look at all the folks trying to get here at the at the first base gate. Man, what a crowd. Uh, and again, the tickets were made available for free, but you had to register. I guess they're trying, obviously, to make sure that uh, there's some semblance of crowd control. That may be a, uh, 
a difficult thing to do under the current circumstance. Yeah. But uh, those who don't get in can come here to the battery. It's not as packed as uh, as I thought it might be as people try to get inside to, to see all this firsthand. So many people behind us right now. I mean, you can see it behind us here at the battery. Just unlimited amount of people here just filling up behind us and having a good time. Everybody's trying to get into the stadium now. Like we mentioned, it's going to start in 3.30, I think it is, right. the ceremony. So plenty of time for people to still get in. but. We're still taking it in, enjoying it, and the fans have come out. Doesn't care. It's 50 degrees out here in Windy. Oh, no. They're going to enjoy this. You know, it's, it's funny because almost as soon as the Braves started making their big push towards, you know, through the NLCS is when it got cold. You know, right. before that, it was 80 degrees some days, you know, 70, 80 degrees, and then it just started to cool down. It started to feel like fall. Then it started to feel like winter. But this crowd right now reminds me of the Game 5 crowd, and that was a cold night. <laughs> and it was packed, and nobody wanted to go home. I remember. And unfortunately, I remember. we didn't win, but I, it was just incredible to see how many people were out here that night. I remember texting Russ because I was watching you guys, and I was like, "Russ, you all right? You look a little, <laughs> little cold. cold. A little cold. It was, little, it was a little bit cold. No question about it. And plus, the the, the disappointment after watching Duval hit that grand slam home run. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, we sort of had the same feeling that we then did in the following game when Solaire hit the three-run homer in the clincher. But uh, they were not to be denied in that game six. Yeah. Let's go to Claire Sims. She's actually in that mob of people we've been looking at from the sky. And Claire, all of these thousands of people who've been lining the parade route are now trying to make their way inside to Truist Park. How's that going? Hey guys, I am live here with Nikki McRae of, you said Douglas County? Yeah, Douglasville, Georgia. Douglasville, and you said you were just, <laughs> we were both just talking about, we've been Braves fans since they played in Fulton County Stadium. That's, That's a right. long time yeah, ago. Yeah. But you said that makes this feel so much extra special. Why? It, it, it's just, it's, it, we've waited for so long. This has changed the city. We're all excited. We're all pumped. We needed this. We needed this. After everything else we've been through, we needed this. So they did it, and it's awesome. And I love the Braves. What do you think about this crowd out here? I mean, this is just massive. Yes, it is. And we needed it. We've all been locked up. We're out. We're cheering. Our team won, finally. Um, I was at the parade in 95. We used to go to the airport and see them in 96 when they would come back from games. So this is this is awesome. I'm here with my best friend. She's over there. So this is awesome. I love it. Tell me about this parade compared to 95. I mean, I mean, I don't remember if there was a rolling DJ at 95. What no, do you there was not a rolling DJ in 95. And actually, when they had the parade in 91, they were in cars and people were trying to touch them. 95, they got smart. They put them in fire trucks so we can't get a hold of them. But uh, this one is it's super special because it's been a very long time. And we're excited to be here and to cheer on our Braves. So next up, we've got the big ceremony that yeah. they're going to have in Truist. Yeah. There's people yeah, obviously tickets. here. We need tickets. We need tickets. Does anybody have tickets? I just need two tickets. I, I don't have any tickets yeah. either. Um, but you can at least take part here. So how special is that going to be for you to get to watch that go on? It's going to be awesome. I'm glad that we have this venue where we can enjoy it, whether we have tickets or not. Um, so I'm just thankful. That's the best word I can say is just thankful. And you've got your pearls on. Yeah, of course. Got the pearls on, got the shirt. I'm ready. I'm ready. And it's not too cold at all, right? No, not at all. I got the jacket off. There's Everybody's pumped up, so I don't need a jacket. I'm ready to go. Awesome. Thanks, Nikki. We really appreciate right, it. Thank you. Let us know if you got some tickets. We need two tickets for me and Jessica. I think Love there's a lot of people out here in her boat, right? Back awesome. to you guys. Thank you. Well, I don't think there's a single extra ticket to be had, so unfortunately <laughs> for her. But Claire, thanks. It's so cool to hear everybody has a story, right? Everybody here has a story, how they became a Braves fan or where they were when they won. And it's just cool to hear all those stories. Yeah, and I, and I think the love has deepened for this team almost more than any other Braves team that I can remember. And you remember there was a time when we won 14 division titles in a row. We've won four in a row this time. This sort of seemed improbable given some of the injuries we encountered, having to remake the entire outfield. Uh, and I think uh, you mentioned this before, DJ. I, I think the fact that this comes on the heels, well, not, I shouldn't say the heels because the pandemic obviously is, is still with us. But toward the end, we hope, with the pandemic, when we've been sort of cooped up, away from each other, it, just, it makes it even all that much more special to gather with people 
for something that's joyous. Yeah, and it's it's just one of these times that everybody will always go back and remember where you were when you, you know, watched game six, one of those type of things. Where were you when the, the Braves had their, you know, parade here in Atlanta? And a lot of yeah. people will have that experience to be able to talk about it. I remember talking to Ron Washington when he was in Houston, and I asked him, you know, about all the turnover, like you just mentioned, where guys get hurt. And he said he literally had to bring the whole team together when Ronald Cunha went down because everybody was just in the dumps because right. obviously he's one of your better players. And he said when he talked to the guys, he told them, we're going to find a way to figure this out. We just have to stay together. And everybody was down after Cunha went down. But you can see they knew then that after that situation happened, they were able to come together and be a better team. And at least to now they're going to be World Series, our World Series champs. So it goes back a long way to this oh, team yeah. trying to figure out their identity with so many guys, like you mentioned, going down throughout the series, yeah. going down throughout the season and finishing the right way. And now everybody here gets to enjoy it. And that's another great story, Ron Washington. I mean, what oh. a well-deserved yeah. win for him after 40 years. I know. It, yeah. At first as a player and then as a coach in Major League Baseball, finally getting his first World Series ring. I mean, that's he waited a long time. He and did. finally got it as third base coach yeah. with the Braves. And he's and a great guy, and they all love him. <laughs> I, I, I have a special plate, my, place in my heart for Dusty Baker, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, he handled this with a lot of class, yeah. uh, did a great job with the Astros. Uh, I, I almost wish he could have gotten one, too. But just, I, know. You know, <laughs> I wish everybody the Braves could have been. Uh, and Brian Snicker's son, of course. Right, right, exactly. You know, it was, right. again, as we mentioned, Brian Snicker's wife was emotional talking about how she was so happy for her husband, but a little disappointed for her son. But, I mean, just to see the two of them, to see those two Snicker jerseys on the field must have been a proud moment yeah. for their family. Oh, no question I mean, about it. That's, that's historical. I mean, you got a, yeah. a father and son going against each other in the World Series. I mean, what kind of story is that going to be later on in life when, you know, they're both done and they get to talk about it? That just doesn't happen. And then you mentioned Dusty Baker, you know, was a brave here and, you know, was I, I think we saw the video of when Hank Aaron hit that home run, he was the one that was, was on, on deck. deck. Yeah. I mean, that's right. I mean, that kind of stuff is you, you can't history. write it. That's yeah. history. I mean, that, it's just awesome. There's so many stories, there's so much uh, there's just been so many layers to this World Series run. But now you're seeing that view over Truist Park. The seats are beginning to fill up. It was suspiciously empty a few moments ago. As we It's a great time to get connected to what's going on in your community. Sign up for Fox 5's daily email newsletters like the Morning Brief and get contest updates and breaking news alerts sent straight to your inbox. Sign up now at fox5atlanta.com slash email. Music's going, we're getting some dance moves in ourselves. There you go, DJ, there you go. Got the shoulders going, okay, I'll all add right, the hands. All right, okay, all right, all right. All right. We're, we're in it, we're in it, right? All right, guess who else is in it? Justin Felder, who has been having a blast talking with Braves fans who are inside Truist Park, getting ready to celebrate the ceremony that starts at 3.30. Justin, who you got? 
All right, guys, we're back here live inside Truist Park, and the fans all around us just got to their feet. Let me give you an idea of what's going on. As we look out, we're expecting the players pretty soon to be walking in through that center field tunnel. So we're looking out there. I, I'm kind of obstructed right here. I can't really see. I'll tell you what, I'm going to hop up on this stage. And take a look. We got Ozzy Albies walking in. It's also up on the big screen here. As we're looking in on the infield, it's filled up with family and friends, some front office folks from the Braves. If you kind of look out into center field right now, Eric, if we can get a shot right there through the gate, you can see the Braves coaches, the players are starting to come in. Right now we got Walt Weiss, bench coach, a guy who knew Tyler Matzik so well from his time when he was managing the Rockies, really one of the stories of the postseason. Tyler Matzik and Walt Weiss was his original manager. Take a listen to this. Who's about to get introduced? Oh, oh, nope, they're holding off. They said number five there for a second. I thought I was going to get wild with Freddie Freeman, but we got Orlando Arcia, one of those uh, key pickups, played a role uh, throughout the season. Terrence Gore walking in right now, has multiple World Series rings. Pinch runner, guy they really didn't need to lean on, but Here's the guy that they did, and listen to that. We got Jorge Soler, he's carrying the MVP trophy. And I'll tell you what, Eric, if we look on stage right now, we see, I think that's Ozzy Albies right there, along with Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms as the players are making their way from center field. They're walking down a long red carpet. That cheer, if you just heard it, was for Ronald Acuna Jr., of course, Torres ACL here on the warning track, or out on the warning track in a game in the regular season. It's Adam Duvall being introduced right now to the crowd, and his son, so cute, uh, uh, a huge fan of Blooper. I'll tell you what, let's take a look. Eric, back on the stage if we can. We got Walt Weiss up there. We got Eric Young, EY, the popular uh, coach for the Braves, standing next to Ozzy Albies. We have the mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, up on stage as everybody is getting introduced here live inside Truist Park. Braves celebration getting underway. If you look up on the big screen here, Eric, we can see who is coming in as we speak. Johan Camargo. A late addition for Game 6. Remember, Ira Adrianza was scratched, put on the paternity list. Johan Camargo gets the call up uh, to Game 6 right there at the end. Drew Smiley, a free agent signing in the offseason, pitched so big in, the, in a relief appearance, really ate up some innings and, and, and fooled some people. The Astros, another starting pitcher here, Waskar Inoa, remember, was supposed to get a start against the Dodgers in that bullpen game, has shoulder issues. Still here, still a big part of this team. Another reason, future looking so bright. The man with the pearls in the shorts, Jack Peterson, as only he can, getting introduced. Got the cigar, got his brother there walking right behind him. If you see him, big influence on his life. William Contreras, reserve catcher for the Braves. Played a big role. Remember when Travis Darno was out. Another big reason to be excited about the future, Christian Pache. Tell you what, Eric, if we look back on the stage, you see the players coming in. As we are here live inside Truist Park here, live on Fox 5, the Braves assembling on stage, getting ready for the celebration. We've got guys all over the place. Actually, Eric, if you look on the left side of the stage there, Big cheer for Austin Riley. On the left side of the stage, check out Ozzy Albies and Ronald Acuna Jr. They're number 13, the best buds. Reunited both long-term contracts here with the Atlanta Braves. Kyle Wright getting introduced right now. Man, a guy who Brian Snicker said really won them game four, that bullpen game. Josh Tomlin, long reliever, a guy that clubhouse guy, a veteran, really well liked uh, in this organization. All right, guys, we're going to send it back to you out in the battery as the players continue getting introduced here live inside Truist Park. 
Great job, Justin. Really exciting to see each get their individual attention and individual cheers from this huge crowd. Very well yeah. deserved attention and cheers. As you see, the red carpet was rolled yeah. out across the field. Pretty awesome. You just saw AJ Mentor there a second ago with his cowboy hat on. Oh man, Ian Anderson right there. Ian, who was a uh, Actually, in the back of Game Six, getting a massage, getting ready for Game Seven. Yeah. Right. If right. there was a Game Seven, so good to see Ian there. He actually had a really great, great ball game early, where he gave up no runs, no hits. I mean, he was he was crushing it. Looks like Heredia right this is there. Heredia here, yes. You know, talking about Ian Anderson, uh, Brian Snicker taking him out of Game Six in the NLCS. That was one of the gutsiest moves of the entire thing, and it, it worked out well when Eddie Rosario got that three-run home run. There he there is, go. Eddie Rosario, fan favorite. <laughs> this place just erupted in cheers when he walked out. I mean, you think Eddie had been here for five, ten years? Exactly. <laughs> Super Rosario. Super Rosario. Super Rosario. Dansby Swanson. That's his big hometown moment, right? Yeah. No guy from Marietta, here he is at Cobb County's Truist Park. He's had a lot of hometown moments here, but none as big as this, that's for sure. Yeah. There's some epic music playing as the players <laughs> walk the out. Dramatic music just come in. <laughs> you love to see that. Hey, we're really making the most of this. You gotta blow it out. I mean, this is this is a pretty cool moment. So fun to see the uh, families involved too. It'll be a, a, a memory for these kids for the, their entire lives and so much sweeter for the players uh, and their spouses to, to have the kids involved here too. Charlie Morton coming out on crutches. I mean, what happened to Charlie's scooter? I mean, they making Charlie go all the way down into crutches? Well, that, <laughs> that just makes the cheers a little bit longer and he deserves them. Boy, I tell you, oh, he, yeah. was, he was so tough. Staying in that game one after uh, breaking his leg there. The left-handed heat flaming sinking missile is right there. This is uh, Will Smith. Will Smith yeah, had Will such, Smith. A, such a great postseason. No earned runs. And uh, boy, Freddie Freeman obviously is. Uh, there's, there's Max Freed. Yeah. Who pitched an incredible game to close out game six. Phenomenal game. I mean. Because of what happened against the Dodgers and what had happened early in the evening, he actually just did not play well. You see Sal Fasano there. Preserving the moment. Can you imagine what the Charlie ovation on, on is about to be in a minute there. when that guy at number five gets called out? It's going to be unbelievable when he gets called. Jesse Chavez there coming out. Looks like Tuki Tucson right there making his way. A big part of that pitching staff throughout the season as well. Is that is that Tucker Davidson behind him? Join there Looked at like the it. end. Number 64. <laughs> Tyler Matzik. Another key member of the bullpen throughout this entire series. Yeah, Alex Anthopoulos said he could have very well have been the MVP of the NLCS, how clutch he was. See guys with uh, taking their own video. I mean, these guys are, are kids too in this moment to be able to have this experience as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and as we look over at Truist Park from our vantage point at the Omni, we can see that the seats really have filled up. So they're they're getting cheers from a full crowd here at Truist Park. So you just saw Dylan Lee a moment ago. Luke. <laughs> Luke Jackson. Those aren't booze. That's Luke. Got uh, the cool sh shades on. Yeah. <laughs> He, he Look as cool as they get now. A couple now. of times in the World Series, yeah. he really did. There he is, Freddie Freeman. I mean, we can barely hear ourselves with how yeah. loud it got yeah. when he walked out. 
A special kind of cheer for him and his, his wife Chelsea and their son Charlie, who's who's getting used to this now after uh, three champagne showers for his Charlie's dad. Like, well. Charlie's like, this is for me here. I don't yeah. know, Dad, why you wave your hand? Everybody's looking at me. You're talking about going through everything. This guy's been through it as Atlanta Brave. Coach Eddie Perez there. Congratulations, Eddie. Great to see all the smiles. Oh, yeah. yeah, these guys are so proud of themselves and rightfully so. It's just great to see the joy and the, the happiness on this day. Yeah, it's, it's going both ways, isn't it? From them to the crowd and the crowd back. And that's the way it's been for the last six weeks around this town. Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad these guys are letting like other family members come out and walk with them because as we know, the players go through a lot. We mentioned 180 plus games, but you have to have a sub support system behind you. Oh, yeah. These guys got, you know, wives, girlfriends, you know, brothers, sisters, whoever it is that sort of supports them all the time. So it's fun to see everybody else being enjoy this experience too. Yeah, it's really a family affair. Snicker. Brian Snicker <laughs> made that yeah. very point, you know, that he would leave and Ronnie would take care of everything at home. He said, I couldn't have done this without her for 40 something years. So for the Snicker family to be able to celebrate being world champions, I mean, they'll be able to say world champions from now till forever. You gotta tell me that somebody's going to take that picture and that's probably going to be the best picture he has with his probably two grandsons walking out there yep. enjoying this moment. It's his wife there running. I haven't heard of anybody in Major League Baseball who doesn't love Brian Snicker too, you know? He's a very likable guy. Yeah. and it appears that the ballpark is showing sort of an introduction into the ceremony that is to take place and there is music playing it is epic looks like all the players and the coaches have taken their places so this is going to be an awesome presentation yeah, for this, all the fans here at Truist Park the stage literally set for us to to hear from your favorite players your favorite manager your favorite general manager Probably from the front office guys too. I think everybody wants a part of this because it's just been a, a total team effort. And you mentioned it's a total family affair here. I mean, from the top down, from you know Alex Anthopoulos all the way down to you know the last guy on the bench for the Braves. This is completely deserving, and this is why everybody's being honored at this moment because of this unique, unique experience that the Braves have allowed everybody to be a part of, and. It's fun to watch all the guys on the stage, all their families. It is a moment that it's going to be remarkable for a long time. Yeah. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms there. You can see her on stage. She was on Instagram Live during the parade. She was on right. the parade route just kind of taking it all in. Looked like she was having a great time. Oh, yeah. yeah I the mean, Braves, she, I, she I, was, I was going to say, they're in Cobb County. But they're still the Atlanta Braves still yes. have a huge Atlanta fan base and they acknowledge that by by beginning the day down on Peachtree Street. Just like they did back in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> you got to touch Peachtree. I mean, you, you can't have to. you can't do a parade and not touch Peachtree. And I'm glad that, you know, they they thought it was important to go back downtown as well. Yeah. As well as come out of Cobb County, which is, you know, what we where the Braves are now and talk about OTP as as opposed to ITP like a lot of people were excited. We, we heard people say they were down there as early as 4.30 downtown just to get a spot to see them for five or ten minutes. And I know it was well worth it just to see your favorite Braves player or coach ride by on the on the float on the on the bus and have a chance to say you were there and saw them and take your right. picture. I think means more than anything. Yeah, it's incredible. Fans are seeing some of the key moments of the run up to the World Series championship and I have chills just seeing Max Freed on the mound throwing those those no hit. <laughs> no innings. doubt. No doubt. I mean, the fans in here are just getting so loud. They love it. There you go. 
Highlights there from game six as the final out. Dansby yeah. throwing to Freddie and yep. the excitement of that atmosphere. And Freddie putting that ball in his back pocket and said that he did that with the intention of giving it to Brian Snitker. The that intention, was, does that mean that it happened or I, no? Well, I, <laughs> I don't know if there was follow through. <laughs> not documented that, but I wouldn't doubt that he'll follow through. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's Joe Simpson. It certainly sounds as though this is about to begin. Uh, and we're going to bring the entire ceremony to you. Shall we toss to it now? Let's listen to what they have to say. Unlike any team I've seen in the last 20 years, they knew that you loved them, and you know now that they loved you. You know how I know that? Right here, baby. There's the proof. This team went through so many bumps and bruises, potholes, as Freddie said. They went through all of them. And you know what? They persevered through every bit of it. And when you think about how hard they worked just to get through the National League East, win that, then they go to Milwaukee. They draw the Brewers. Brewers have got a great pitching staff. Outstanding. We go up there, they got gold towels waving everywhere. Took them in four games, that's all it took. Then the Braves draw the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, I know. Best team money can buy. The team all the experts, everybody picked to repeat. They're going to win the thing again. They're going to repeat. Well, they forgot about one thing. When they picked the Atlanta Braves to finish third or fourth in the division, they didn't know about the heart of this team. Go to Los Angeles. They're waving blue towels everywhere. 55,000 strong. Great fans. They only won two games. On to take on the best the American League had to offer, the Houston Astros. Great lineup. My gosh, they had the American League batting champion batting seventh in their lineup. They were going to take the Braves easily. They were waving orange towels everywhere. Is anybody in Georgia like orange? They only won two games. Well, one place was waving gold towels. One was waving blue towels. One was waving orange towels. We don't wave towels around here. You know why? Because we got this. said, you know what? This came from Jock. We just might be those. I want to update it, and I want you to finish it. Turns out, we are those.
Repeat after me. Atlanta Braves World Series champions. One, two, three. Atlanta Braves World Series champions. All right. I know you want to listen to these guys more than you want to listen to me, and we'll get to that momentarily. We got a couple of other people that need to say a couple of things, and we're going to start it off with the chairman of the Atlanta Braves, and that's Terry McGurk. Thank you, Joe. You know, today we've been living the dream. In fact, the reality is even better than the dream. We've been waiting 26 years for this special moment. Oh my God. This, this trophy is unbelievable. It, it's, it represents all of your enthusiasm, support, and everything you've done for us for 26 years while we've waited for this. Thank you so much, Atlanta fans. Uh, this team has overcome everything. It's unbelievable. Snit and Alex and all the guys there's been so many potholes in the road, and they overcame them all. We were left for dead in, in July and early August. No, no, these guys don't believe that. Your enthusiasm today, we must have seen two million people on the parade route that showed their appreciation for what these guys have done. So thank you on behalf of this great team we may never see anything like this again. Thank you, Atlanta. Okay, Joe, come on back up. Thanks, Terry. Next up, Commission Chairwoman of Cobb County, Lisa Cupid. We started out our day on Peachtree, ended in the Battery, and I know no matter where we are in the A, we know how to party. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves for their championship and making us all feel like champions. With all that we experienced this year with the Braves organization, and with the men and women of this community, let's just say a comeback is always better than a setback. Well, we couldn't have done it this year without their leadership, without the leadership of our past commission chair, Tim Lee, without the support of our board of commissioners, without the support of our county manager and our men and women in public safety, we thank you for your partnership, our partnership with this baseball, but it has grown to be so much more. They have helped us through this pandemic with holding vaccination sites. They have built up our baseball fields across the county. They are supporting our veterans with a donation towards our Veterans Memorial in partnership with the Warrior Project. The Braves community is part of our community, and I'm so happy we can celebrate together. The Braves are our, part of our winning team, but we all know that they are truly Atlanta's home team. And I'm, yes, and I'm grateful we have the Atlanta mayor with us today to help us celebrate. The Braves are bringing all of us together as a county, as a region, as a state, as a country. And all I can say is, go Braves! Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cupid. You know, I was so glad to hear you have that great round of applause for Lisa Cupid when I said, Commission. I was afraid you would think I said commissioner. Just 
Just wondering. Next up, the mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms. As we rolled down Peachtree Street today, I thought of my grandfather, who used to haul paper from uptown, haul paper and trash, and then he'd come home, turn on the radio, and listen to the Braves game. I thought of 1991, when I jumped the barricades and disrupted the whole parade, I thought of Hank Aaron and what he meant to our city and what he left in each of us. He left in us the belief that anything is possible. It's been said that legacy is not leaving something for people it's leaving something in people. So thank you to the Atlanta Braves for leaving in our great city and our great state the belief that anything is possible. So in the same way that Hank Aaron taught us humility and courage and forgiveness, in the same way that he taught us that in each of us was a champion. You've given that back to us today, Atlanta Braves. And on behalf of the people of Atlanta, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. We're so proud to call you our home team. question for you. You die-hard Braves fans, you know how many wins the Braves had at the All-Star break? 44. Do you know how many wins they had after the All-Star break? 44. Going into the seventh inning of game six, the total number of runs that had been scored by both teams before Freddie loused it up was 44. But I think Hank looked down and said, you know what, I think Freddie needs one more. Anybody that thinks that Hank Aaron wasn't shining down on this team, you're sadly mistaken. And we miss him every day. And now, next to speak is Billy Aaron. and Derek Sheila for this wonderful opportunity to see you and to thank all of you for the support you have given the Atlanta Braves over the years. But certainly the chickens have come home to roost this time. of Hank Aaron pervades the space. He is here with us. He loved the Atlanta Braves. And I am so very, very happy to be able to see these young men who have picked up the mantle and who's carrying it on. Thank you.
It looks easy now because you're looking good standing on the stage and you have won the ultimate prize, the ultimate prize of Major League Baseball. And that means something very, very special because we stand here at this moment because you are the world champion. You know, on occasions, I would share with Henry one of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare, written in the play Romeo and Juliet. Henry was my Romeo. I was his Juliet. And the quote that I often read or recited to him, I want to share with these young men and simply say, you are a Juliet, I mean, you are a Romeo. <laughs> we are your Juliet. And remember, you are so great that I want you to remember these words, when he shall die, take him and cut him into little stars, and he will make the heavens so wonderful that the world will be in love with night and never worship the garish sun. You are and you do represent those stars, those tiny little stars in the heaven that we will always remember and appreciate you for all that you've done. Thank you, thank you so much. There were no disappointments in winning a world championship, that's for sure. But if there was one that tugged at your heartstrings a little bit, this next gentleman who's going to speak was not able to attend the celebration nor the game on Tuesday night. And yet, this guy is the one who turned this season around for the Atlanta Braves and for you fans. He went out and got players that you see here that made this a team. He brought them to Atlanta when everybody else was ready to give up on the Braves. He certainly did not. He is quarantined. He can't even come down here, but he is up in his suite and he's going to speak to us. And I want you fans to let Alex Anthopoulos know how much you appreciate what he did. Alex. Woo! Man, today was one of the greatest days of our lives. That parade was the most incredible thing we've ever experienced and something we are going to be world champions every single one of us in this stadium for the rest of our lives 2021 atlanta braves world series champions four years ago when i got to atlanta we had a long journey we went from toronto to california to atlanta and I got up in, the, in this suite and I looked out at this amazing ballpark and these incredible fans. And I, I stared out to the right, all those flags. And I thought to myself, 
Man, I'd love to have a nice red one. And now, finally, we got one. Flags fly forever. 2021 will fly forever. Thank you. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Sorry you're not down here where the guys can dogpile you or something to celebrate. Pour some champagne on you. That'll come later. A guy who's already been dogpiled and had champagne poured all over him, and rightfully so. What do you guys think of the manager of this team, Brian Snitker? Congratulations, Skipper. Thank you. Braves country, we did it. We did it. We are world champions. I'm sure myself and every one of these guys up here want to thank you for your support, the energy that you provide us all year long. And it is. It's just like I, the same thing I'll reiterate. Like I told these guys the other night, boys, you are world champions for the rest of your life. Congratulations and thank you, Braves Country. Thanks, Brian. Next up, this team doesn't really have an official captain, but I would say, just personally speaking, that if it did, it would be number five. You already know that. Freddie Freeman. few days since we won has it hit me yet and I kept saying no I'm just numb but today it's hit me we're world champions forever uh, I could single out pretty much every single guy on this team this year that did something absolutely incredible and special for us to be able to put a red banner up there this year If this wasn't the epitome of a team and a team effort, I don't know what team really means then. Because this group of guys, Alex up in the up in the suite, Terry, it, we we pulled on the same rope and tugged on it and tugged on it when no one believed on us, and we pulled it all the way to the championship. And. The biggest part of the we did it is you guys. When we were treading water at the beginning of the year, you guys went into those seats and supported us day in and day out. And little did you know you were contributing to the greatest trade deadline in the history of baseball, in my opinion. You guys' support came out and got the World Series MVP, the NLCS MVP, the RBI leader, Jocktober, Stephen Vogt, and we got Charlie Morton extended, Travis Darno extended, and that's because you guys supported us all season long. So, when you say, and people talk to you about the Atlanta Braves, won the 2021 World Series Championship. It's not us. You guys stop that and you say, we did it because you guys are the reason we're standing on this stage. So thank you. We love you all. Champions forever. these knuckleheads get up here and tell you how they feel. Who wants to go first? I got it random up here. It can be anybody. Who wants to come up? 
All right, come on, Dansby. Dansby Swanson. I'm speechless. I really don't have many words to describe. I mean, I've been waiting 26 years for this, too. And I just, I only have a couple things to say. First thing is, this trophy, this is ours, Atlanta. This is everybody's. And the other thing, it might get me in trouble, but re-sign Freddie. Before I bring up another player, all the coaches and staff were introduced with one guy that's missing, and I want you to send some love his way. He's under the weather, wasn't able to come today. How about Ronnie Washington? All right. How about the winning pitcher from game six? Where's Max Fried? You were the winning pitcher. That would be you. That would be me. What's up, everyone? Uh, this, uh, I couldn't be more proud of every single guy on the stage, everyone behind the scenes. Uh, it was a it was a hard year. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs, a lot of injuries. Uh, you know, but we. We fought through, we did it. Every single guy on this team loves each other and they they stuck up for one another every single day. And to not only have the support of everyone behind me, but every single person in this stadium and everyone that was out there supporting us in the parade, it, it's, I don't know, I'm speechless. It's, it's unbelievable. Thank you so much for all of your support this year. And uh, let's run it back next year. When this team went to L.A., they were serious underdogs. Nobody gave the Braves a chance. Do you know what they did? They opened up a serious can of Eddie Rosario. Where's Eddie? When you first came, found out you were coming to Atlanta, what were your first thoughts? Wow, I'm so nervous now, now. But I'm so happy to play in this organization. Uh, wow, what a city. Unbelievable. Uh, thank you for everything. When the team went to Houston and were serious underdogs, they had another bigger can to open up. This guy, I'm 6'3", 220. When I stand next to him, I feel like Pee Wee Herman. We opened up a can of Jorge Soler. same question when you found out you were leaving Kansas City and coming to Atlanta what went through your mind oh 
Bueno, en ese momento mis pensamientos no estaban, no estaban bien claros, ya que me habían cambiado. Eh, aquí, desde que llegué aquí me siento súper bien, gracias a esta gran organización por darme la oportunidad de estar aquí y de ser parte de esta gran familia, gracias a mi familia que siempre ha estado ahí apoyándome todo el tiempo y especialmente gracias a todos los, a todos los compañeros de equipo que me han hecho sentir parte de esta familia. Yeah, my thoughts weren't very clear initially when I got traded. I didn't know what to think, but right away when I joined this organization, I felt very welcomed. So I just want to express my gratitude to the organization for welcoming me. I want to thank my family for all the support, and I want to thank all my teammates for everything they did for me this year. Congratulations. Okay, who wants to speak for the bullpen? Luke Jackson. All right, all right. Um, I just want to thank you guys uh, day in and day out. It's just a pleasure to play here. You guys bring the energy. I mean, you see how we play at home. It's just we can't do it without you guys. And then you guys showing up today for the parade just made it that more efficient and that more just punctual and we're so thankful to be able to play here in Atlanta and as a team to the brotherhood this year that was formed man unmatched and you can't beat heart and I think that's what brings a 2021 World Series champion here to Atlanta thank you guys when things were at their darkest this team was kind of treading water not getting over 500. One of the main reasons was a guy who missed 100 games this year for the Braves and was such an important part. And while he wasn't acquired in a trade at the deadline, it felt like it. Travis Darno. Braves country, we did it. We're the World Series champions. And lastly, Dansby said it best, re-sign Freddie. And I think you know who he is. He's the only guy in shorts up here. Jock Peterson. What up, Elena? Stay humble. Hey, guess what? We are those motherfuckers! Oh boy, where's Guillermo Heredia? Now, I've been asked time and time again about this. You seem to be the one that originated that. What does it mean, and will you demonstrate it for us? Bueno, el origen del machete yo creo que es algo de motivación para el equipo, algo que le da fuerza, algo para intimidar al contrario. Y bueno, yo creo que eso nos hizo grande y llevamos ese lema en, el, en, el, en este año y la verdad que es algo impresionante. It was just a means to give the team motivation, give us strength, intimidate the opposition. And I think it was something that took us on higher, and it was a great blessing for us this year.
<laughs> Best second baseman in baseball is Ozzy Albies. Where's Ozzy? Thank you guys. My voice is still gone because I'm celebrating because of you guys. We are the 2021 world champion and without you guys, we could have done it. We have a special group here and we're signing Freddy no matter what. Let's go. We need another pitcher up here. And I'm going to ask A.J. Minter to come up, did his thing. You got to be from Texas to wear a cowboy hat like A.J. A.T.U. There's been a lot of heartbreaks, a lot of heartaches. I'm probably responsible for half of them, but I'm just so happy we got it done. We're here to party. We're going to show the world how Atlanta parties. Like I said, I'll be in the battery later tonight. We're going to keep going. It's our time. Thank you all. Adam Duvall, you had this stadium. I thought it was going to come down here in game five with that grand slam. But what you did for this team, along with the other guys that were collected at the All-Star at the trade deadline, was incredible. Way to go! Thank you. Wow. What a ride this has been! My goodness. Uh, if you were, if you would have told me three months ago that I'd be standing on this stage right now, I'd think you were out of your mind. It's, uh, I just got to thank you guys uh, for accepting me back to Atlanta, not for the first time, but for the second time. Uh, I got to thank these guys behind me for accepting me again with open arms, and uh, what a beautiful ride, and let's redo it next year. Let's go. I think you've all got a chant for this next guy, and I think you know what it is. Austin Riley, let's hear that chant. Today it sank in. We're world champions. The crowd, the crowd y'all bought today was unreal. I'm thinking round two next year. What do you say? Ronald over there, and he run off. Come on. Come on. Ronald Acuna Jr. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see you guys next year, and we do the same thing. Open mic. Who's next? Anybody else? You some bad motherfuckers, Atlanta. Hell yeah! What's up, Atlanta? This is what it's all about. Hey, this city has embraced this team since day one, second in attendance in Major League Baseball. I want to see it again next year. I love all of you guys. You guys are a huge part of this team. Again, we love you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tyler. Last call. Ian. Anybody wear that hat would want to talk. Right. I just want to thank you guys for coming out. Um, you know, it's only my second year here, but I'm looking forward to uh, many more good years and 
Um, let's celebrate this one and enjoy this one. Okay, last one. I know how you're going to react because I did the same thing. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Game one of the World Series. Starting pitcher. Suffered a broken leg and kept pitching. He's been some other places, but he is an Atlanta Brave. Charlie Morton. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Terry. Uh, I wanted to say in front of all, in front of everybody here, how important this group behind me is to me. Um, this group will never be the exact same way it is right now. And I just wanted everybody to know how much I love you guys. I love this moment. I'm so appreciative of this moment. This moment that we're sharing this uniform and the stage together. The most special of my career. Thank you. Yeah. You bet. All right, repeat after me. Repeat. 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 Let's just start it now and get ready and do this again next year. What do you say? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 20, Atlanta Braves are world champions. Was wonderful, wasn't it? I mean, incredible. Every one of the players got a special moment uh, walking onto the field. A lot of them had something to say. I, I think I was most moved by Billy Aaron quoting yes. Shakespeare uh, and talking about how, how happy Henry is and his presence with this team. And uh, of course, the, the loudest applause came a couple times when people said <laughs> resign Freddie Re right, Freddy. right exactly. now today they said sign him now do it again yeah I love the talks of repeat I love the talk of let's do it again everybody understands this is a big moment but you understand everybody in that group was something special and Freddie said it he said each and every guy on his team organization did something throughout the year to get us here yeah incredible my favorite moment was Brian Snicker coming out and saying, we did it. <laughs> yeah, no, really. Just simple, short to the point. And I also like to point 
and out the fireworks are still going off. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it is awesome. I mean, this is how you do it, right? Yeah. You wait 26 years to win another World Series. You gotta have a, a big display like this, and they really knocked it out of the park. Not to make a baseball reference. Yeah, I, it was really moving to hear Charlie Morton too acknowledge the fact that this team will never be the same. I mean, the guys standing on that that stage, they love each other, and they know that not all of them are going to be back next year. And he, he took time to appreciate this moment, said it's the, the most special moment of his career so far. It really. And and that's why guys in his position understand how important it is to do all this, right. to take it all in, to right. soak it up, because that group of men, coaching staff, organization, you will never have the exact same players in that locker room again. So to enjoy all this together, and say we did this together it's a special moment i know those guys are really taking heed of what's happening right now and taking it all in well you said we did this that would have been a nicer more polite way to say what jock peterson said <laughs> we'd like to apologize to our fox 5 viewers there was some colorful language oh, man. and they got him off the stage pretty quick but he was um the whole excited. place erupted, by the way. <laughs> there didn't seem to be much offense inside the stadium. I no, think uh, I don't yeah. think so. None yeah. taken. But from yeah. our end, we're sorry if you um, had small kids watching or anything like that. But everybody here, obviously, who played a part in this victory wanted their chance to say something and to kind of take this all in. And they, it looked like they gave everybody a chance to speak who wanted to speak. Yeah, Dansby Swanson, the, the hometown guy, obviously so, so happy yeah. uh, getting a chance to, to be here. And, and he's, if I'm not mistaken, the one who started the uh, the re-sign Freddy business. Oh, he yeah. said, I, I know I might get in trouble, but uh, yeah. <laughs> the re-sign Freddy. And, but you know what? I think he said something that everybody was thinking. Sure. I mean, me and Courtney were sitting here talking while, while Freddy was talking. And we was like, okay, is he about to make an announcement? Is he about it to say? It sounded like right, he right, was right. going yeah. to. Like yeah. he was leading towards it. <laughs> and when he did, everybody was like, ah, okay. But then when Dansby came up, obviously they're thinking it as well. Ozzy said it. Yeah. So sure. a lot of guys love having Freddie around. He's the ultimate teammate. But I think they know how important he is to this ball club and the Braves trying to get a repeat, trying to get it done again. He's a big part of that. Yeah, because what's better than a World Series championship? Another World Another Series one. championship. So right. everybody's looking right. forward to the next step and how we recreate the magic that was the 2021 World Series champion Atlanta Braves. Yeah, and these guys are competitive, so obviously they're thinking about the next game. Uh, and you mentioned Freddie is the ultimate teammate. To that point, he made it clear that everybody on that stage at some point contributed to winning the division, to winning the division series, to winning the, the pennant, and ultimately the World Series. And we saw that all the way through the postseason. Uh, up and down the lineup, everyone contributed. Oh, I mean, absolutely. even go back to some of the bullpen guys talking, call them the night shift. Right, uh, right, everybody's excited right. to see Tyler Massey. We talked about how good he was in the postseason. You see Eddie Rosario there uh, in the middle, a guy who was a huge part of that lineup, batting first, always consistent, had a big Obviously, being the MVP of the NLCS, I mean, that's a big deal. But the, you can't, we can't talk enough about how good the bullpen was in the playoffs, especially in the World Series, being able to close games out or even when, you know, Charlie goes down, now Max is up and didn't have his best outing. He had to come in and bring in a lot of guys from the bullpen, and they yep. held on strong. So there are a lot of guys who are definitely worthy of all this, and they're being celebrated for it. There were some boos that went up when uh, we heard about the Dodgers being the team that everybody thought would win the right. World Series pennant this year. They were last year's victors, and everybody thought they could do it again. This and they got two wins. I love that when he said yeah, that. Yeah. Josh Simpson said they op opened up a can of Rosario. <laughs> yeah. On yeah. And then opened up a can of Soler. It was fun to watch Jorge Soler uh, walking around with that uh, World Series MVP trophy. Oh, yeah. uh, you you made you made the point. It's true. It's like he was carrying his prize fight belt around. He yeah. is. He is. He, he looked like he walked. It, it was too. fun. I mean, he walked into the stadium and he had the guy behind him with it holding it up. Like now the champ is walking into the building, and it was cool to watch. I mean, he was awesome. a I mean a, a monster part of what they did. Um, you, you just can't recall him not having a good game one game here or there. But his home runs are so timely. You mentioned it. The first one he hit was the first one, you know, obviously in the World Series history. Like, yeah. he did a lot of good things that gave the Braves a lot of momentum when they started ball games. Oh, absolutely. It's just been great to see, you know, every time you thought 
you know, okay, they got one win. Okay, we made it to the World Series. That's good enough, you know, that's good enough. They can be proud of themselves. But I know a lot of Atlanta sports fans had it in the back of their minds. Like, it's okay. <laughs> we're, we're okay if they just make it to the World Series. They don't have to win it, you know. Then they get one win. Okay, at least they didn't get swept. Yeah. You know, yeah. at least we, we could be respectable. You know, and then they get another one, and it's like, are they going to do this? Right, right. It, I think, Russ, it goes back to what you talked about was, in 95, everybody expected it. Everybody okay. thought yeah. they would be like the Dodgers and just come in and just roll great people. But that's why this is so different and feels so good yeah. right. because it's so unexpected. Nobody expected us to be here. And, Courtney, I mean, it's a great point that, you know, you start to build up to it, and you say, okay, things are starting going our direction. Oh, we can win this series. <laughs> oh. We're up 3-1. We got a chance to win the World right. Series. So it all came together. Well, when they went 3-1, I think what everybody was saying is, well, now they have to win it because yeah. that would just hurt too bad. Yeah. You know, and that's, again, I think that's why people had such a reaction here in Truist Park when the Dodgers were mentioned because they remember the feeling of last year's NLCS going, you know, against the Dodgers and how that went. So uh, just great to be able to celebrate something and it's complete and it's done and we won and – don't have to have any regrets. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of fun to look back at the battery behind us and look over Truist Park, yeah. and nobody's in a hurry to leave. <laughs> a lot of them have been here since very yeah. early this morning, uh, and it's more or less over at this point, and yet everyone wants to savor, savor this victory because well, they know it may not over, happen again. But they still got Luda and Big Boy. Well, that's true. About that's to true. take the stage, or set for 430. So when that happens, I'm sure a lot of people will be excited to take that in. And it sounded like A.J. Minter made a promise that he'd be at the battery later tonight. So. I, I heard him say that. <laughs> I, I don't said doubt he's coming to party too. tonight. Yes. He's going to be in the battery. I'm going to guess A.J. Minter is not going to have to buy a drink tonight. Oh, what, no. What do you think? <laughs> I, I don't think anybody on that team will have to buy a drink for a while <laughs> in this city for sure. So, All right, friends. Lives looking silent. Fan, like you mentioned, there's fans still inside. They haven't gone anywhere. Obviously, getting ready for the concert inside. But nobody wants to leave. Nobody wants to miss out on any of the festivities. So it's about to be fun. And what a great last hurrah for just this stadium. You know, Truist Park, this is probably the last big Braves-related event of the season. Well, the season is over now. But, you know, what a way to send off Braves country as they spend the winter just relishing this win and until spring training you know it's just a right. it's a great way to, to end the season right it, it was a beautiful day out here today honestly i mean you know a little bit cloudy yeah. a little bit windy but yesterday was a rainy day I mean, yeah it's so, not bad uh you know this was all planned in a big hurry and it, I, i'm just really impressed with how it all came together i think everybody will be excited i mean they got a chance to go downtown everybody downtown got to see him and then you come through cobb county and i mean we showed you pictures of 10 11 deep uh, yeah. of fans waiting for the Braves to come through and on a parade and then you get inside the stadium you get a chance to hear from your favorite players you get to see them walk the red carpet with their family and kids it's just stuff that you know will be ingrained in the memory of a lot of Atlanta fans for a long time absolutely one big Atlanta fan right there ludicrous another one big boy they are on stage the party has begun so for our part we are signing off from right here uh, go Braves. Yes. What a great day this Go was. Braves. Fox 5 News continues after the break.